All right, sounds good. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Uh, today's agenda is, um, I think we have one, two, three updates today, right? One, two, three, yes. Um, so we have Burrow, Cello, and the Training and Education Working Group. Um, did I see, um, is Silas on? There he is. Yep. Okay. Hi. So, uh, any other agenda items other than the updates? Okay. If not, Todd, you want to get rolling? With the sure thing. Uh, with the Hackfest stuff, I was out the past two weeks. Um, Tracy or Chris, um, Anything we need to cover on that to catch up, I think it's just make sure folks get registered. Uh, it sounds like there was some discussion maybe two weeks ago just on the agenda planning in the TSC call, but- um, Right, but I didn't see any actually today. planning and I think it's <laughs> got in, in the way for a lot of people, um, but All yeah. Right. Um, Tracy, for this call, anything we should jam on? Otherwise uh, we can connect up after and drive things forward. No, really just a, a reminder that uh, we're looking for agenda items, uh, things that people will be able to hack on specifically uh, to be added to the agenda. Cool. I, I think that's it on that one, Chris, then, and we can move into the, the updates. Okay. All right. Silas, you're up. Hey, let me just get my, <clears throat> but to give you the QT, Q2 update again. Um, Q3, okay, so um, in terms of project health, um, I think a lot better than the last update. I think probably on the last update, I was still mired in uh, a fairly massive refactor that hadn't been released for quite a while um, and that sort of thing. Uh, since then, Burrow has uh, been used to push out uh, our, as in Monax's um, agreements network, uh, a, a T1 test net for, um, uh, for our public uh, legal agreements network. Um, it seems to be working. Um, doing that has provided a lot of quite useful pressure uh, on particularly on operability on smaller things like how we generate config um, to bigger things like how we perform network boot, uh, Kubernetes helm charts, um, a load of stuff um, for running validator pools and has also driven some thought about how we model the separation between a, a human or organizational authority and actual validators um, and stuff around key provisioning. Um, so we now have two companies uh, actively contributing to our development effort, which is nice. Um, uh, one being TCS, which I had mentioned at the previous update and uh, another company, Finterra, who are building again uh, a, a zoned uh, public network um in in a similar line to us um and in fact their developers were, were making useful contributions i had no idea they were even working for the same company until we eventually had a call and joined up some of our efforts and thinking um so the grand refactor is complete so the entire stack uh, including javascript libraries packaging tooling um is all uh in uh repo bosmarmot there's still a GPL dependency there. Um, we may, if we were to replace some of the Ethereum ABI uh, stuff, pull even more into Burrow, uh, but that's the direction of travel to make Burrow uh, increasingly uh, uh, batteries included in, in that single repo. Uh, and in fact, uh, rework the command line. So we have sub commands for uh, creating Genesis specs, configuring the chain um, very shortly for, for running a keys service. Um, and we'll keep adding uh, stuff there so that, that it, you can do a go get and, and natively run a chain, uh, that being one of our focuses. Um, we also have nearly got full EVM compatibility. Um, we would have had it a few weeks ago, uh, but I'm getting uh, one of our uh, sort of contributors and somebody who's kind of in the maintainer pipeline to implement these opcodes. Um, and that's just incurred a bit more overhead, but we've got all the plumbing. So it's just. Uh, static call that we're missing now. We've, we've implemented um, uh, four or five opcodes, a couple of other EIPs. So we, we should be um, 
running in the same compatibility level as public Ethereum on uh, not Metropolis, whatever the next one was, um, uh, but the latest anyway. Uh, so uh, issues, um, particularly driven by us building out into this public network, some stuff that we've kind of never worried that much about is coming to the fore. So we need to have a flexible fee structure. Um, and when you start thinking this through, there's a bunch of dimensions in terms of where fees live, like whether they're attached to a transaction or associated with a particular contract being called, um, how they're set, whether you have a market mechanism between validators, and this is all in the background with Tendermint changing and upgrading its interface all the time as it moves to 1.0. So what we need is an ability to charge for gas. Currently we meter gas so that computation is term terminates, but we don't actually convert any native token into gas, um, which we probably need to have a, uh, a public um, network running. Um, then there's also the idea of uh, taking a network fee um, out of a percentage fee out of the value that's being transferred. Um, so that works for some cases, it, it kind of works for ours. But the upshot is that we want a way to incentivize validators to run by making a fair cut of uh, transaction volumes. And that depends on the domain as to what that means. Um, so I don't want to make too many assumptions about that, but provide something that's kind of flexible to build on and, and we need it to. Um, governance. Um, I'm implementing currently some a, a kind of primitive uh, for governance that uh, the first the first iteration of which is just a big pointy stick where uh, a single key is able to change validator set change permission change native token distribution change consensus parameters um, the idea would be then to wrap that behind an autonomous uh, probably a con model as a contract uh, agent that can take votes from validators or votes from a selected quorum of keys or uh, and, and can manage like unbonding periods so that you deal with certain nothing at stake problems. Um, it's a huge complex issue, but I'm trying to build like the, the simplest base in Burrow that, that you could implement various governance methods on top of. And we're also working with a, a academic group that's doing some stuff on voting projects, uh, which may help us out there. Um, but changing the validator set is like the thing that we really need. Um, and that should be in this, this sprint. I'm in a two week sprint right now. Um, uh, we also need the ability to do some kind of escrow between, between chains. Um, so, uh, is it Quilt that is the Hyperledger project that is doing something with, uh, Interledger? Um, we're kind of in the model of, uh, Cosmos, but that doesn't really exist yet. Um, I mean, they're launching, but the idea of having cross validation and the ability to escalate a particular transaction type to, into blockchain transaction that's the kind of model we're working in um but we're going to need to be able to fake that and essentially do a, a distributed lock so you stake something on ethereum um our validators are able to go and uh, check the state of that contract then we will mint that token on our side token and or data um but it'd be useful to get some feedback from uh, other projects about how they're doing this I, the, the plan would be to run it on a quite a slow basis um like you know maybe once a, a week or day just so it can be monitored but i'd like to get some kind of support for doing stuff like that in burrow um and don't really have a plan um okay releases so we, yes we finally made a release with like 161 commits or something the next release will be uh, um, much sooner than that so that's uh, zero um zero eighteen zero it was released on the 9th of may there's a change log linked in the uh in the wiki page uh, there's there's a ton of stuff there um and generally i'm much happier with the uh the basis that we've got to build on um in terms of code uh and there's some features in there as well in, including a tendermint upgrade um although that already needs to be done again um because tendermint moves so fast uh so overall uh, the, the chat channels are getting pretty busy uh, particularly in borough contributors which is really generating for me some useful discussions which is great um the borough mailing list is quiet because i've kind of totally neglected it um but i was thinking i could send a mail in to the ether there with um a package of the updates uh, including this uh, i'd do this probably after the call um so current plans so the big ticket items that we're working on kind of mostly within monax in this sprint is uh we've done a big uh uh cleanup of monax keys which is this uh, was this satellite project that was in bosmama we're pulling it into Burrow um, and we're maintaining the same interface to 
implement HSMs and things like that behind, but we're cleaning up the crypto, updating the libraries, removing some intermediate layers from like Go Crypto, which is this tenement library, uh, and trying to go straight to source. So we're using BTC Suite for the um, SECP keys, and we're using the, um, the standard Golang ED25519 stuff, uh, and, and generally just removing a lot of cruft. Uh, and again, this is in the direction of the sort of self-hosted burrow. So you had to install something from another repo really to use burrow, uh, or you could implement Monix keys yourself, but of course no one did. Uh, so it's now a sub command, uh, uh, the, Monix, the Monix key stuff is, and we're gonna have some better options for uh, the model I'd like to move towards. That is when a validator comes up within a validator pool, it generates its own keys. They never leave the HSM or the machine. Uh, and then we have some way of getting that public key bonded onto the chain rather than what we're doing at the moment, which is generating all the keys in a big bang and provisioning them around from, from a CI system or even from a developer's laptop. Um, uh, I've got another note on that a bit later. Um, so yeah, implementing GovTX, that's the mechanism that I, I, I was discussing there under the issue. So that's, I guess governance is also an issue, but this is the, the underlying layer that we need to change validators. I've got, got an idea about doing. Um, and another thing that's gonna be pretty nice, um, particularly uh, for us, um, we have a, a, an object relational, a, a solidity relational mapping uh, hack really that is called SQL Solve, but it does work and it gives us a queryable view on solidity contracts. Um, it will be massively simplified by having a, a, an event system that isn't based on subscribing and making sure that your connection doesn't drop and that you're around for the time. So we'll have an event fire hose where you can say, give me all the events between block N and N plus M, and it will give you all of those events, uh, possibly with some filter that you can get, and you can request them again whenever you like. So a consumer can just remember its offset um, and it can backfill um, uh, a load of events. Um, I'm just wondering if I should be on the TSC room. Yeah, uh, that's fine. Um, so uh, yeah, and that's also going to be able to drive uh, integrations, things like Kafka, and that's a big thing for us because we want to be able to drive, uh, say, like legal back office systems and things like that. But but generally, um, and we'll we'll build the Kafka adapter will probably be a separate, quite small uh, client to this. Oh, and all of these things are moving on to gRPC as well. So uh, the, the keys is the first thing to have a gRPC interface and we'll be creating uh, existing methods on, on gRPC um, rather than some of the hand-rolled JSON RPC stuff. Um, major theme for Burrow, yeah, is, is operability, ability, so network formation stuff, um, the idea of like a hierarchical identity for validator pools. So the idea that uh, you, so say we're running a pool of like seven validators, if we have a, a key that is like the master key or the validator pool key, um, and that is, will be the key that can bond any, uh, any server that comes up into that pool. Um, so there's a few reasons why this layer of indirection is quite useful, uh, certainly in Tendermint. Um, and I'm thinking we should capture it explicitly in our account model somehow. Um, yeah, improved config generation, Kubernetes Helm charts, which are now as part of the, the Helm library. Um, and then we need to look at sna states snapshotting to catch up with chains, um, which should be fairly straightforward in terms of getting a, a level DB uh, checkpoint. Uh, maintainer diversity. So we're still pretty Monax heavy, um, but that uh, we've, we've added um, uh, my new colleague, Sean Young, to the maintainer list. He's working pretty actively on Burrow. Um, we've got uh, me, Casey, and Tyler from Monax. We've also got uh, a pretty good pipeline. I mean, for us anyway, uh, of, of future maintainers. So there's a couple of guys from Fentera, a guy called Ahmed uh, Pul Pulazade and Mustafa Sedgkat, um, who have already made useful contributions. I'd expect by the next update that they will be fully maintainers, but it's still quite a new relationship. Uh, we've also got Sean from TCS. Um, he's a newer developer uh, and needs a little bit more practice before uh, I'd be ready to make him a maintainer, but, but on the horizon, we, we would at least have uh, a better bus factor on companies. Um, contributor diversity, yeah, we've added three new contributors. One, uh, uh, like possibly more than that for, for some documentation. Um, there's a couple of people doing like PhD projects and things on, on Burrow um, who have started to write some docs that haven't been merged in. Uh, we've also got a, a piece of tooling called Snack um, written by uh, Ahmed actually, um, which is not uh, obviously on the Hyperledger organization, but it is explicitly for burrow so that's an entire kind of uh, truffle like thing um 
uh, yeah, and 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 Sean Bluck, Blucker, as I said, um, it, it meant meant that we had to go a bit slower on some of the EVM upcodes, but he's he's given us some really good work on uh, getting uh, up to uh, most recent EVM compatibility. Um, so then, yeah, under additional information here, I just made one remark. I don't know whether it's worth discussing now, um, but so so Burrow is known as the Hyperledger project with an EVM, but uh, after a consensus and more generally, we're working very closely with Tendermint and Cosmos now, and it sort of feels like, particularly with some of our plans that are away from the EVM, that we could sort of come to be the project for building permission public chains on Tendermint slash Cosmos or even the Hyperledger app for Tendermint or something like that. So Burrow will increasingly have some support for uh, this uh, generating like fee gas schemes um, to run your, your, your public, uh, your public zone um, in a, in a, it doesn't explicitly have to be Tendermint, but it's in that model of, of zone communication. There are some other consensus engines that have a similar interface um, also for running business process as in BPMN, that's what the agreements network does. Um, and we're going to have some support in our S natives for doing some of the execution there. Uh, um, uh, yeah. And, and then this business around escrow, well, we want that to develop into uh, a, a way of sending um, arbitrary messages using this IBC um, into blockchain transactions. Um, so I, I don't know what bearing that has on what input the TCS would like to have on that, whether, you feel that this would belong well i mean we we would we, we could always do this in a fork but like just how, how uh, to imagine the development of burrow in this direction um and particularly with this kind of uh tendermint emphasis um I, yeah anyway i just thought it's worth remarking but um that's it tell him to come on down <laughs> Um, Come and, and join. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, they don't have to join. They, they just have to set up shop. Um, <clears throat> uh, a couple of points uh, on, um, on on your update, um, which I, I uh, appreciate. Um, <clears throat> so, in terms of uh, you, you mentioned the need to uh, be able to um, charge for gas, and I have a similar requirement for what we're doing with the Burrow EVM plugin for, um, for Fabric. So we'd love to collaborate with you on that. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, you know, as for the, um, you know, escrow or, you know, interoperability with other chains, um, yeah, we should, uh, we should, we should talk about that too. I suspect yeah. that a lot of guys are also interested, but I'll let Kelly speak for them. Yeah, so I mean that 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 would that would be good. I think that the the, the gas charging is something that uh, could could fairly easily be added as a question of what artifact we want for the schedule. Um, currently, we collect a fee that is set in the transaction, and the fee can be. Mm -hmm. Uh, set to, to whatever you like. Uh, newer versions of Tendermint are uh, allowing us the ability to uh, push through on our trans transaction check. So it, that's the, when it enters the mempool um, to push back what, what fee is offered. And then they'll use some approximate algorithm to try and pack the, uh, get pack into, well, each proposal will try and uh, get the maximum uh, total fee packed into a block. Um, so uh, that that will be the tenement integration piece for us. But then um, there's a there's a few there's a few axes on which you could try and do the fee stuff. Um, you can have a competition there, although it doesn't allow per validated competition. There's also the, the the possibility that I kind of prefer is taking a percentage of any value that's transferred, because um, mostly so in our particular use case we kind of think of computation as being commoditized, like almost negligible cost particularly for um, uh, operations that are more bookkeeping when they're compared to the operations that are mm -hmm. actually, for example, listing an agreement. Now, I know that doesn't work for everyone, and I've been speaking to Finterra people, and, and it doesn't work for them. Um, so, 
yeah, it doesn't yeah, take the long. use case that, that I'm thinking of is actually more where the gas is used just as a rate limiter, um, not necessarily as a fee or as some sort of incentive for running validators and so forth. Um, although it could be again, but you know, at least, you know, the initial set of requirements that I have is more for rate limiting. In other words, you know, you can do 10,000 transactions a day you know, or something like that, right? And if you need to do more, you know, you need to you need to ask permission, that kind of thing. So yeah, actually, that that's something that I would because I mean, volumes of transactions are always going to be relatively limited on on a PBFT style system. Um, well, yeah. <laughs> and, right. and one one thing that I quite like to do is, I mean, I slightly worry about the the nature of uh, validated voting power, which is the, the sort of essentially what we would model as a token, but we would transfer into the tenement uh, mm -hmm. voting power as a mechanism to extract rent. But another way for them to extract rent using this, other than the fees, is um, to be able to have uh, a certain quota. So we could quite easily base that on the relative voting power of a validator, which also has its own RPC, and it gets the right to some number of slots. Um, mm -hmm pushing transactions in, um, which might be a kind of interesting way for also for operators to specialize um, whole voting power um, to, to operate a node and then auction off their their transaction quota. So yeah, I'm kind of interested in thinking about that stuff too. Um, uh, yeah, I think it, it sort of needs a bit of bit of modeling away from the code, I think. Yep. Anyway, hey, so just uh... Oh, sorry. I was going to ask for the for the work that's being done to Tendermint. Is that um, to make that uh, and Burrow in particular to make it a, a sort of fully public permissionless uh, network, or is it still going to have sort of permissions on um, you know who can who can send transactions and, and some of this rate limiting? Uh, I guess just yeah, have some questions on on the public capabilities of of Burrow. So it will remain uh, permissioned, um, it, but it will all, also be public. Um, it, for validators, we will be finding a way to distribute validator token, and we'll have a minimum bond. So in order to be a validator, uh, your uh, well, they're also going to be starting off like what we're doing in the t in the T series. We've got some more companies on board, so we know who they are as well. So, so that's kind of invite only. For participants, currently, certainly for the test net, we're not restricting um, participants, but no one is able to create contracts. So all of our contracts are like autonomous factories that can create other stuff. So we've actually got some contract level uh, uh, kind of permissioning. But in terms of if you're if you're a punter who shows up and wants to formulate an agreement on for us, then then that would be open, and that would be the idea uh, running borrow in that mode whether at some point we would need um to uh start limiting uh, transactions coming in that that may be the case when when we have this model where there's uh where where borrow network can start as a tendermint zone um then i think there's potentially a way in which that becomes sort of permissionless in that you don't need permission to start your own zone um but, but otherwise we would be sticking with the permissions. And, and as I say this, we don't actually, so some people are using Burrow to be a, 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 a drop in Ethereum replacement. So they want, uh, ev they want every, the, the global permissions to have the create permission. We don't actually give anyone, uh, any participant, the create permission. And we actually, we need the, that's why we need the governance stuff. When we need to do a, an up, a contract upgrade, it's only gonna be a governance agent that can do that. Um, Okay, got it. That's that's useful. The the one last question I had, just thinking about um, sort of how Burroughs uh, positioned is, uh, I know there was recently an announcement of the Enterprise Ethereum uh, spec, and was curious if that is if if uh, you guys are involved in that at all, and if, if that's a goal with Burrow to be compliant with that spec. Um, it's a PowerPoint, I, but <laughs> I I I hadn't. Um, uh, I hadn't noticed that. Um, I'm not against taking a look at it, but frankly, uh, I was pissed off the last time I engaged with uh, Enterprise Ethereum. Um, <laughs> and I'm not sure what state they're in. Maybe they bootstrap themselves. Um,
but uh, yeah, I, I take a look. I, I don't know. What I was arguing for was uh, for Ethereum was a, an effort to unbundle um, into manageable pieces, you know, like a decent mm -hmm. EVM spec would be really useful. Like the yellow paper is not a decent spec, um, mm -hmm. a decent spec on um, how gas scheduling should work on Vitalik's kind of ideas around unloading state that hasn't been rented out. Like that's potentially mm -hmm. interesting. So, so I'd, it, yeah, um, I, I'll t I will take a look. Um, but yeah, I don't know without, without looking at it and um, also just like getting my finger back on whether they're a functional organization. Okay, perfect. Just wanted to check. Thank you. Could you expand just a little bit? You made, you made a, a mention in passing, Silas, about maybe Burrow becomes the, I think you put it like the, the Hyperledger application for Tendermint. Um, may have misquoted you there, but could you say a little bit more about that? Sorry, just finding nothing to unmute. Yeah, so I'm, I'm not quite sure how to phrase this, but um, I, I guess I, f I feel it's like it's certainly, a, it, it's a, an area that we're doing a lot, lot of work in to support our use case. Certainly some of this, I mean, it will, is, going in, is going into Burrow. And I suppose part of the question is maybe how much of this belongs fully in Burrow or as an extension. But if you look at, so what, what so Tendermint has this quite uh, forceful, uh, interface where it kind of it kind of owns the p2p and it owns all of that stuff and i think that that's that's been an issue for you guys like sort of or fabric integrating which kind of want to have a little bit more control over your um consensus network and and there may be some scope there for for breaking it up but particularly with their the stuff they're building in their sdk actually obeying roughly speaking the abci interface allows you to go and play with the broader um uh tenement network now the current art on this is, so they have an SDK and they have this base coin app, which provides some useful stuff, but is very much focused on things like um, decentralized currency exchange. So no one's doing stuff like we are, which so at the core of the legal agreement stuff is, is this business process modeling on a chain on, on the one hand. And then there's a load of like operational stuff. Like, so the way that we have provide the private validator over um, an interface that could be plugged into HSM, um, uh, the way that we're handling our state, there's a bunch of things that, um, and of course the EVM itself, um, and, and also thinking potentially about other execution. Um, but there's a way in which we're building a lot of stuff that probably provides something useful. If you wanted to launch a, a public, you know, a public or semi-public zone that could connect to cosmos. Um, uh, and so the, and the sort of broader tendermint ecosystem. So, what what am I asking? Um, I suppose do, do do we think this belongs in Burrow? Like what? How how are projects evolution guided? Um, would it be useful? How would it link to other uh, other projects? Um, is this something that could end up being a library? I mean, so one thing that I didn't want to end up doing, um, I think, as I've said before, is to try and have pluggable consensus. Um, totally pluggable execution engines, ideally not break out of a single process because that sort of seems to be the niche. Um, and going on to a more general purpose execution against Tendermint, there's a slight risk there. But um, but yeah, we, 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 we are a Tendermint app in the sense of we implement the ABCI application interface. That's when I say app. Um, and we have a lot of other stuff that relates to building with permissions, building with um, gas and fee incentives, particularly as we develop that. Um, and that seems like it's, it's useful if anyone wants to, wants to play with Tendermint, which obviously has its, um, its own uh, kind of unique selling points on, on the consensus mechanism there, particularly once it can be sharded into zones. Okay, thanks. Thanks for the update in general, Silas. So thanks, Silas, this is a great update. Um, I think we should uh, move on because we have two more. So I think up next was, where did my window go? Sorry. Is it? <clears throat> uh, cello update. Cello. So Bawa, I think I saw you on. Yeah, and uh, the maintainer had to do the update. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. So this is the Um 
Now I will introduce to you um, the progress of the second quarter for the cello and, uh, and the plans for the next quarter. So um, currently we have released the version 0 0.8 and, the, and the, the next release version will be 0 0.9. So in, in current version, um, we have these features. User, user can deploy fabric networks in Docker and uh, Docker Swarm. Um, and the user can, can also apply the fabric, fabric network in, in the user dashboard. Then they can see the status of the fabric network and, uh, and also can upload, um, deploy, and call and query the smart contract in the user dashboard. Mm. And in the in in the last quarter, the mm, the cello, cello, cello com, com community has been very active, mm. and we keep weekly weekly regular meeting. Mm. Yeah, and and currently also we also have three maintainer who mm, are working on the project actively. Mm. And now we we have provided we have provided some tutorial video for for cello startup, and in the future we will record more related tutorial video. Mm. The current plan the current plan for the channel for the channel, uh, mainly are, uh, um, the mainly um, the current plan for the channel mainly are the uh, refactor the code for operator UI and both the UI and the back background service of the user dashboard. Mm. Uh, list change is mainly for code specification and uh, refine overall architecture design for the user dashboard and operator dashboard. So this will let the community developer understand the code struct easily and join the developer development faster. Mm. And the other, the, 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 the biggest feature in the current plan is to support Kubernetes agent. Um, um, and based on this feature, um, we will provide, provide the users with more, with more ways to deploy, um, deploy fabric networks. And, and the other feature is to integrate Composer with Cello. Um, and we also have some improve, um, um, improve, uh, improvement, uh, included uh, dynamic, uh, dynamic certificate, uh, certificate generation and management for the, for the fabric network. Um, in the current, the certificate method is a static and static fixed method. Mm, it is it, it, it very easy. Mm. Uh, and uh, um, operator operator can import an um, operator can import existing fabric network into the pool of the fabric networks. So this will give more ways to create fabric network in channel. Um, in the user dashboard. Uh, user will will can watch the logs of all nodes in fabric network, and uh, edit the smart contract online easily. So this is this makes user um, to debug the, the smart contract easily. Mm. And um, we we will ensure the release version zero point nine in the end of this quarter. Mm. Yeah, mm. I think this is all the update for the uh, child progress in the in this quarter. So, any any questions? No, oh, thank you. Any uh, questions? from the others. All 
right. Great. Okay. Uh, thank you. So I think next up is Tracy. Hey, Chris. Uh, actually, I'm going to have uh, Kelly Cooper uh, do this update. Uh, awesome. Kelly was elected prior to our decision to have the TSC elect uh, new chairs for the mm -hmm. training and education working group. Uh, so she will be running the, the working groups and the updates for the training and education working group. Kelly? Great. Thanks, Tracy. The training and education work group is a collaborative group of people who are keen on Hyperledger. We are having kind of a transition between intent and action. It's almost a little bit of stage fright and we have tried kind of setting up a process and setting up sprints and then we took a look at a couple of examples. We have some great opportunities. For example, the edX course for Hyperledger is now up to 100,000 users. And so some of our graduate students especially can benefit by contributing to the next course or the next version of the course and currently can contribute to the discussion forums within the edX course. However, we do more talking than we do developing. And so we're trying a couple of new ways around that. Uh, one is one of our members is working with Tracy to kind of set up the style guide for the way that images might look. Um, we have a lot of conversations about target audience because there are many and about kind of breadth versus depth. At this point, what I'm working on is utilizing documentation and putting together some potential templates for how it is that people can help build learning materials. And so I would say that the group is interesting and excited. We have as many learners as we have people that are ready to prepare learning materials. and We can utilize them for testing um, the learning materials. However, in our next update, I hope that we will have more actual materials to present than we have enthusiasm to discuss. That's it. Tracy, did you want to add anything? No, I think I think that's pretty much the case, right? And um, you know, I think the the thing maybe is to ask the uh, TSC and, and people who have been involved in, in new working groups kind of how to get past that, you know, initial initial phase of, of the working group, right? Where it uh, seems like there's, there's not a lot of uh, output, but more just, you know, passion for, for trying to do something, but not really sure how to get started. Um, uh, you know, I know um, we've seen similar sorts of updates for the first time with different working groups and, um, so, like, is there any sort of words of wisdom that we, we can offer as the TSC to the training and education working group? And I'll add to that also that as TSC, if we have particular areas, for example, with Cello or Burrow, where you can really use and request some materials, then uh, more of that targeted focus might help us to get a few people to be less nervous and more productive. So I guess um, but let me see if I can if I can frame this correctly. So you have an awful lot of interest, but is it that those that are interested don't know how to contribute or they don't have the expertise or help me understand? I think more the expertise. And so at first expertise. I thought that they might not know how to contribute. And so what we yeah. tried was existing training inventories. I set up database for ideas that people saw on the internet, whether that be through medium or mm -hmm. uh, through other materials to collect that. Um, and we had no, no response or two responses. Then we set up a um, kind of an idea list of things that people would like to contribute to. And then that looked like it was going to go somewhere. And we asked for people to self identify if they would be contributors or learners. And for most mm. part, they were learners. And then we set up, um, I mocked up three courses 
uh, one on blockchain technologies, another on IoT technologies, just to kind of find out if people were interested in um, kind of business use cases, and no one responded to that. Then we set up a style guide for what it is that distance education looks like with today's understanding how we could differentiate ourselves from MOOCs with good materials. Everyone was enthusiastic and there was no response. So we've got about a dozen different possibilities set up on Google Docs and I do see when I'm in there, maybe two or three people looking at it. Um, we've got a couple of people who like to talk and talk. <laughs> and, um, you know, it could be this, it could be this. And so I don't, what we're trying to do is to corral a little bit and just say, let's pick a couple of topics. But for example, we had the opportunity to look at the Sawtooth documentation that will go into edX and everyone was enthusiastic, but still did not really have any um, kind of contribution from a technical nature. And so one thing that we've thought so about- can I, can, I, can I make a suggestion? Because I think I see where this is going and I think rather than maybe necessarily sourcing new material, maybe the thing to, because there is an awful lot of interest, people want to learn, they're hungry, but maybe the thing to do for this working group would be to work with the various projects to help them understand where there's a need to improve whether it's their documentation or their inventory of samples or what have you that this working group can help facilitate um, that kind of interaction as so i think a lot of times people are afraid to say hey you know or or, or the question just sort of gets lost in whether it's in chat or um you know in in, in hyperspace or whatever um you know i really wish there was you know, something that told me how to build a transaction family or whatever, uh, or, you know, how do I do a chain code, that kind of thing. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it just might be worthwhile to sort of working with the, the, the people that are showing up and saying, hey, let's go through what's there and let's build a, a gap analysis of what could be added to improve it and then working with the project teams to figure out how they can help to span that gap because i think the expertise is always going to be a shortage and it's likely to you know fall squarely with those that are developing uh the various tools and platforms but um i don't, I don't know what others might think kelly or dan or one other Alice. quick thing and then um i'll pause and that is what we did in our last meeting was we offered, let's take a look at the existing tutorials and start to go through those and to identify areas where perhaps you got stuck and additional information might be interesting or maybe the vocabulary was yeah. set that it needs to be expanded on to where you can link from the existing tutorials to an image or to more detail um, that would help to um, yep. for the reader to kind of understand what that right. context was. I mean, that would be huge, I think. That would be huge. So we were feedback. calling that a, a visual dictionary, and we've been trying to get that going for two or three meetings as well. So I don't, um, I don't discredit at all the enthousi enthusiasm of the group. We just need somehow, it's like the, we're, we're not quite at the right combination, but I think it's going to be a great group. And so um, we are trying to at this point work with existing materials. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Chris, I'll just, I'll, I put this in the TC chat, um, but I, I agree with you 100%, right? There are actual comments coming out in these working groups of things that they wish were different or problems that they're seeing in the existing documentation and that sort of thing. So, um, you know, maybe it's, it would be worthwhile for us to create a thread on the training and education working group mailing list that really just ask people for, hey, provide feedback on, on like yeah. where you're having trouble with getting started or the existing material that you're finding um, that's not working for you, that sort of thing. Yeah. That's I a think, great idea. Uh, like I said, it, it would be huge to get that kind of feedback and to have it um, 
you know, focused, you know, through the lens of the working group, you know, sort of pulling this together and then having, you know, um, some coherent ideas about what we what we might do and how we would might how we might prioritize and so forth. So and the other nice thing about that is someone is contributing to something that's already in process in case starting right. something is part of the wrinkle. Right. And 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 sometimes it is just getting started and people start by, you know, just fixing typos or fixing grammar and and then they start to learn it a little bit better and feel a little bit more comfortable. They get a little bit more involved and I think that you know um, you know again uh, uh, you know we, we you know I think we're better when we're collaborating together and, and driving you know um, uh, you, you know driving more I, 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 again I think I think a lot of times people feel oh you know I, I can't you know I, I'm not worthy or I don't know what, you know, about, you know, engaging with a project and feeling like they're a part of it. That's, it's a large part of the hurdle of getting started. Um, uh, and, um, and so this, this working group, I think could be very effective at, you know, getting people a little bit more engaged in the various projects and helping in meta ways, right. Of, you know, they, they may have meta, Contributions. They may not be experts, but maybe by virtue of the fact that they're consumers, getting together and they could say, "Yeah, it would be really great if we had more samples, or if we had better examples, or if we had tutorials as opposed to just a bunch of code um, that we're supposed to sort through." So anyway, just a thought. on a specific case, so this is Silas from Burrow. Um, there's somebody who's doing their uh, thesis. Uh, for like bachelor's or master's or something called Valve Valveware on the Burrow chat and he's offered to write up his experiences and like he's had various issues because out of date docs and stuff but he, he, he seems to know what he's doing and he's someone who's offered to write this up and, I, and we said oh that'd be great for the project it, could I put him in touch with someone because I think all he might need is a bit of like guidance slash hassling which I'm want to forget to do um would would that be part of this sort of an effort? Yes. Okay, so shall I shall I um shall I ping you on chat um yes. and, and get him on there? Yeah, okay, cool. The other thing is is that um we're being really um encouraging and I think that everyone in the group sees this as an opportunity. So it could be that placing people in additional collaborative environments would be a great fit so the feedback is much appreciated okay any other comments questions suggestions for Kelly. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. I'll give people eight minutes back unless there's anything else. All right. Talk to you all next week. Chris. Ciao.